Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we will be going through the Weber classification. The Weber classification is used to describe the different types of lateral malleolus fractures or otherwise known as distal fibula fractures. The fibula is the long skinny bone in your leg. The Weber classification is important because it will determine the treatment pathway for the patient by identifying the fracture's involvement with the ankle syndesmosis joint. The ankle syndesmosis is a group of ligaments which helps to provide stability to the ankle joint. A disruption to the stability of the ankle joint may lead to ankle osteoarthritis and other complications. There are three types of Weber fractures. These are a Weber A, B or C. You can see different examples of each Weber fracture on your screen as we speak. Before we take an in-depth look at these fractures and what they show, let's have a quick look at the normal ankle anatomy and the structures that are involved when talking about the Weber classification. Here we have an AP x-ray of the ankle. We have highlighted the key anatomical landmarks to make it easy for you to understand the concepts that we will be talking about today. The key structure that you will need to be aware of is the distal tibiofibular syndesmosis. Whether A, B or C fractures are determined by where the fracture occurs in relation to the ankle syndesmosis. Simply put, the syndesmosis is a joint formed of several ligaments located between the distal tibia and fibula. These ligaments help to keep the ankle joint intact and fractures involving the syndesmosis can cause instability of the ankle joint itself. Let's now take a look at a breakdown of Weber A, Weber B and Weber C fractures. Weber A fractures are fractures which occur at the most distal part of the fibula and therefore occur below the ankle syndesmosis. These fractures are usually transverse, as is the example that you can see on your screens now. As they are below the syndesmosis, this means they do not interfere with the key ligaments that help to keep the ankle joint intact. As a result, these fractures are usually always stable because the ligaments supporting the bones are usually unaffected. Weber B fractures are seen in 20 to 25% of all ankle fractures. These fractures occur at the level of the ankle syndesmosis and they can either be stable or unstable depending on the type and extent of injury. In order to establish stability, weight bearing x-rays may be performed in order to get a better understanding of whether there is a Taylor shift and therefore an occurrence of a syndesmotic injury. In most cases, these fractures are usually spiral fractures, just like the one we can see here. Weber B fractures may often present with an associated medial malleolus fracture, as shown in the radiograph by the loose bony fragment. Weber C fractures are fractures which occur above the level of the ankle syndesmosis. These fractures are pretty much always unstable and cause a disruption to the ankle syndesmosis. As a result, you may see an x-ray appearance like the one on our screens, whereby there is an abnormal alignment of the Taylor joint. This is referred to as Taylor shift, and the talus has shifted from its normal position due to the ligament disruption. We can also see that just like a Weber B fracture, Weber C fractures may also present with an associated medial malleolus fracture. Treatment for these types of injuries will usually head down the operative route in the form of an open reduction internal fixation procedure. We are now going to take a look at another type of injury that is associated with a Weber C type fracture. This is known as a Mason nerve fracture. A Mason nerve fracture is a fracture which occurs more proximally in the fibula as a result of a Weber C type injury. Due to the high energy that travels up the leg due to the extreme force caused by the injury, it is not uncommon for there to be a Mason nerve fracture in the presence of a Weber C fracture. 
Other causes of Weber C and Mason and fractures may include forceful external rotation of the ankle, high intensity sports, or simply a fall. And with that guys, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you now have a better understanding of the Weber classification. If you found this video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our next anatomy and pathology video. Thanks for watching.